All right, so welcome back everybody. This is Lazy Fire again, and we're back in Black Ops 2. And I've just completed Prithic Victory. And as you can see, after every mission, you get a bit of a story, in, uh, a bit of story information about what you did, and if you completed objectives and such. Because this game has branching pathways, you'll see that a lot. So let's pop into our loadout here. Uh, we're going to be taking on as David Mason this time through, and he's got a bit more futuristic weapon set. Of course, he can still. Uh, access some of the same guns as his father once he unlocks some things. Or actually, you can see him now. Uh, so you could get the old school foul, or you could get some of the new stuff. Um, but we're going to go with the SMR. SMR is, in multiplayer, a uh, semi-auto weapon, but it's full auto, similar to the foul in this game, uh, in single player. So, we're going to pick that, and we're going to take the millimeter scanner. There's a good reason for it. This Titus is an interesting weapon. It fires kind of a grenade flechette thing, and it also has a shotgun attachment. And normally I wouldn't keep this around because it has really low ammo counts, but we're going to hold on to it this time around. And in terms of grenades and equipment, well, we're going to hold on to the EMP grenade. We have C4, and we have the XM31 uh, wrist-mounted grenade unlocked. But we're going to go with the combat axe. We're going to take this off and go with the combat axe, I should say. Now, I could also do that and have two lethals, but we're going to hold off because the EMP grenade is incredibly useful in pretty much all of David Mason's missions. And finally, before we start things, we're going to go into our career record and check our challenges. Now, I've actually completed this mission and rewound to this point to do the last one, so you can see what some of the ones I've done earlier are. Uh, it's not too bad. <laughs> I was very dumb the first time I did this mission, and I didn't pick up the optical camo at all, which is a huge plus in this mission, and you'll see why. So, let's kick this off. That's how it started. Her old man tries to kill Menendez. Menendez wants payback, even if it takes decades. Menendez, back then, was a, uh, a big fish in a small pond. He made his cake on the drug cartel out of Nicaragua. There's a hand-me-down. Mm-hmm. The CIA smoked his old man. Old Cyclops is pretty pissed at America. While we're fucking around in the Middle East, the Russians and the Chinese are getting real cozy. Huh. Now, the politicians, they want you to think this is about ideology. It's a lot of horse shit. Give me your phone. Go ahead. Rare Earth Elements. Whole fucking world runs on this shit. <laughs> Who controls all of it? China. <laughs> so while corporate America is kissing China's ass. Now the mysterious Cordis Diaz social network has crowdsourced simultaneous protests in both Iran and North Korea. Never seen in public, who really is the leader of Cordis Diaz? He's known only as Odysseus. Odysseus? My ass. <laughs> Raul. Fucking Menendez. Asshole. I told JSOC, but they were too busy. See, the drone race had started. I mean, really, guys? You're gonna build an entire military based on a mineral element that's wholly controlled by China? I need a drink. Dipshit. No, oh, God. Give me a soda. Get it from the nurse's stash. None of that diet crap. China's Premier Chen is outraged by Cortez Diaz's leaked memo, alleging the cyber attack was covertly ordered by the White House. And through all the dirty shit the U.S. government's gotten away with, this time, they're innocent and no one fucking believes them. They take out Cortez Diaz's network. Two days later, the director of the FBI burned alive. Right now, a billion people believe that Raul Menendez is their savior. Shh. Guess what, boys? He's not. You better take him out pretty fucking quick. That shit's gonna happen. Oh, look at that. My nana has got a whole private fucking army hidden out there. Cubans. Elite rank. State-of-the-art tech. How many followers does Cortez Diaz have right now? What, a billion people? Try two billion. You'll never believe their leader's a terrorist. They think Menendez is their savior. They've got a hell of a disappointment coming. That's all I could say. Time to go see what Menendez has got hidden down there. You ready, Harper? Keep momentum on your swing. I don't want to be left hanging. 
Okay, and with that we're going to start some gameplay here. And this is just a little quick section. Uh, nothing said in this part matters. So I can tell you that Frank uh, Frank Woods in that last part uh, basically just laid out all three major storylines in this mission, or in this game really. And unfortunately, as much as he likes to be exposition, uh, only about like <laughs> two of those really matter. Because the whole uh, rare earth elements part does not really come into play almost ever in this game. And it's kind of impressive that they had all the wherewithal to create all these things, but they completely forgot about that storyline. The Cold War of China that's advertised as well doesn't really happen. It's only in the Strike Force missions, which are annoying as hell to play. So, we'll see those though. Oh, we'll see those. We are going for the good ending after all. And with this, we get to meet one of our new friends. Here he is. Got it! Yes! You okay? Yeah, we're okay. Thanks to you. Wide open. A little more than a skeleton crew. Walk in the park. No seas idiota. Do not underestimate Raul Menendez. His followers sure did. And what does Cortes Dia mean exactly? It's Latin. Hard day, some shit like that. Sounds like some noble. That's what Menendez wants his followers to believe. Trust me, it isn't. How short is my character? He's like, he's like at everyone's shoulder height. <laughs> uh, anyways, so this is the wingsuit section. Me, you're up. We'll never see this again, so don't worry about it. Uh, it's a nice little section. Uh, this game kind of throws the David Mason technology at you pretty quickly. So just stick with it, you'll be fine. Uh, nothing too out of the ordinary. The nano gloves and stuff at the beginning were actually pretty cool, but I think I've seen those before in an Mission Impossible movie. So this section is pretty self-explanatory. Right stick is going to guide you through this maze of rocks that you can definitely slam yourself into, which is unfortunate because I definitely did it a few times my first time playing. After a while, it just kind of becomes kind of rope. There's nothing really in this section. You just get to fly a wingsuit. It could have been a it could have been a very easy cinematic. Uh, but I do have to uh, I do have to acknowledge the fact that they did go and uh, make that. Oh, I couldn't deploy. Try this again. Hey, this time I worked it out. Wow, I've never had that happen before. <laughs> oh boy. You good? No. I'm good. I'm bad at this Guns game. Are. Crosby, you got the left side. Cover. Ready on your go. Okay. So we get to be introduced to our future enemies. We'll be seeing a lot of these guys in the, in the uh, 2025 chapters. This is Harper. Come in. Enemies preparing to leave location. Advise. We need firm intel on the capabilities. You are clear to engage. Section, you seen this? Yeah. Be ready to move on my kill. An EMP grenade will fry their cloaking systems. Yeah, don't worry about that. Other ones mine. Killing them will do it. <laughs> oh, we are gonna have so much fun, Combat X. So the SMR is actually one of my favorite weapons in multiplayer. The millimeter sight that I have on it, if you look closely, will show you where cloaked enemies are. Uh, because of its ability to kind of scan the area. Now I believe it's actually multiplayer only enemies who are not moving, which counts as most enemies in this section. You can also ride that elevator, but we're not going to do that. We're going to rush ourselves up here because there's one more thing we want to do. Oh, I thought there was a guy there. You see on the right here is a helicopter. Oops, let's switch over. We want to take that helicopter out. It's actually a drone. And if it takes off, it can create some serious issues for us. So we kind of ran ahead and got it, got that thing. All right. Yeah, um, the scripting in this game, we need to talk about that. If you listen to the last video, at the very end, there was a guy who actually uh, started talking as the last section was being done. Let's pop that. And 
that's kind of... Oh, fuck that. I gotta stop doing that. I'm gonna die doing that stuff. Uh, so, let's open this up. This is another fun feature of the access kit, is that you can get a control of some of these things in sections levels. So instead of just opening up doors and boxes, which you can also do here, uh, you can also pop open these things. Oh, also, I'm invincible while I'm in here, so throw all your grenades at me, please. Alright, so with this little turret section, it doesn't last too long. Once you hit enough people, it's done. Or you can exit at any given time, but you kind of screw yourself if you do that. You can also zoom in and just pop people from a distance. You know, I'm realizing now I may regret my decision to switch to uh, the combat axe for a very specific purpose. It's not, we're not there yet, but it'll get there, and I'll explain it. Um, the big thing about sections missions that you need to know is that there are a lot of robots. Sorry, I'm looking for... Nope, nope. I want my combat axe back. There we are. So I'm going to try to keep that to a minimum by picking up all the ammo I can. Come on, like here. On the run. See, those little ammo crates are super helpful. Anyways, the really fun thing about the future missions is that they bring in robot enemies, which go, I mentioned go, in the go. intro I did for the game. And while they're an interesting feature in addition to the game, they are... Uh, hands down some of the worst ideas I've ever seen. Because you see this turret here, uh, if you hit it with an EMP grenade, it'll stop shooting, and then you basically have to unload an entire magazine into it to kill it. So your best chance is to sit near an EMP, like that, or sit next to a box, like that. No, I missed the throw. Man, it's like multiplayer all over again, I'm taking stupid toss risks. If you guys don't want me to use uh, certain weapons or want to see certain weapons be used, let me know. I will switch over to those through the course of the game. Um, I am going for the best possible ending, but if you guys have uh, choice suggestions that you don't think I would normally make, let me know about those too. Uh, this is going to be a little bit more, a little bit more modifiable than a lot of the Let's Plays you'll see uh, in video form, anyways. All right, let's use this thing to show Titus off here. Now, you see the the delay you have on each shot uh, between hitting it and it exploding. Salazar here, uh, I get into a little trouble. Let's pop that guy. He's, those guys are technically dead before they even die. Uh, they start dancing around a bit, and they're pretty much gone. They're distracted as soon as they get hit. Looks like I got a couple... Whoa. Looks like I got something important there. And with that, we're pretty much set here. Really? There, you're dead now. Uh, so yes, this is, uh... Whoa. Okay, Harper, good deal. This section here is, uh, overall pretty quick. Not too bad. As long as you know... There be more to this facility underground. Kraken, this is section. Yeah, just doing this. Surface installation is neutralized. Moving to investigate secondary structure. Watch your step. Floodwaters may have weakened the structure. Is anyone else weirded out by the fact that only Section has a nickname? Everyone else is known by their last name. Salzar, Crosby, Harper, all those guys. But I have a last name or nickname. Kind of weird to me. Anyways, let's wait for the scripting to catch up. I still have two. Holy shit! Look at this. What we saw up top was just a front. Walls are several meters thick. We lose comms inside. Update Briggs. Tell him we're moving in. Dragon, this is Harper. Confirming SciTech installation beneath the temple. Requesting immediate cleanup and containment unit to our location. Be advised, we will lose comms as soon as we make our entry. Kraken confirms. Ground team moving for immediate insertion. Stand by for ETA. Salazar, get it open. Okay. So let's pop open this thing. This is the aforementioned stealth camo thing. Um, every time you use it, it does that little se sequence there. This is actually pretty cool. The enemy will. Systems. Oh. We need to get our techs working on analysis. Maybe you should shoot up. They'll barely see you. Yes, correct. When you use uh, this, they have. Ooh, boy. Jeez, every time, man. They got an ASD. Ah, yes, ASDs. Let's get rid of those. 
Clear the area. This is why I have the Titus and why I have EMP grenades. These AGRs, uh, autonomous ground robots, are annoying as hell. They they take way too many shots. They have way too much health, and they do way too much damage. Uh, so you end up tossing EMP grenades almost at your feet that, just to go. not get hit by them. Keep pushing. Uh, with with this uh, stealth camo, I am pretty much invincible uh, invisible to them, which is good news. Oh, I might get this. Ah, oh, I didn't get the challenge on that one. It's something like uh, four enemies dead with one shot, which is too bad. I could have got that. But as you saw, when you hit yourself with an EMP, uh, you end up scrambling your own vision for a while, and your stealth camo is deactivated. So let's show off what's pretty cool about the millimeter scanner, is that you can shoot people through walls effective, a little bit more effectively than you could in previous Call of Duties with it. So that means I don't have to uh, make myself too visible. Of course, there I was trying to shoot a guy who was a few meters away from me. Now, let's just pop a few more of these guys and kind of be done with this section. Oh. What the hell was he doing? Ugh, I used a shotgun on these guys last time. It was great. Let's pop out the Titus for a minute. Because that does have a buckshot backup on it. There is a bit of fighting to be done here. So we have to pop on this. And let's mash a button and get down. Actually, I do like that you use your little uh, wrist-mounted thing instead of mashing buttons in this game. Okay. Let's... Alright. So the idea here is those tanks there are filled with nitrogen. Uh, and if you blow them up... Yeah. So the... Let's pop that. That tank needs to die before I get out there because it is uh, deadly as hell. Like, if you get anywhere near it and it explodes, you're done. Alright, so this is actually... That guy got froze up. See? <laughs> uh, oh well. There it is. Whatever, you're dead now. I'm having way too much fun with these combat axes. So I'm down to one EMP though, and no combat axes, so I have to be a little bit more uh, careful up in the next few sections. Hello. Not anymore. I could pick up one of those QBs, the LMGs you see these guys with, and that does make a lot of these things a lot easier. As a matter of fact, we're going to do that. The dual band is uh, your basic thermal sco... fuck me. I thought that thing was very dead. It's a basic thermal scope. Not too fancy. Now, of course, because I have, uh, when you use one of these LMGs, your big issue is your sight time, but because the QB is, it just spits bullets out faster than it has any right to. Oh, I'm out of combat axes, I forgot. Let's pop that tank before I get okay. there. We're clear. There's so much more ammo for this than anything else. Alright. With that, we're going to stay cautiously away from that, and we're going to get ourselves our own ground robot. Hello, little friend. AGR is one of the kill streaks in multiplayer. It's actually a pretty good one. Weapons, components, armor. Menendez is arming himself for war. Woods told us how much wealth Menendez built over the years. He's been investing in weapons tech. Somebody's here. Sorry for that diversion. Let's go meet a new friend. I, I... Please, don't hurt me! Okay, come on out! This lab is linked to a known terrorist. You start talking, or I will hurt you. My name is Eric Breiner. I'm a magnetometrist. Yeah? And what is, uh, Menendez's interest in you, buddy? They brought me here to process the solarium. It's a new, rare earth element that will render all existing microchip technologies obsolete. They're coming. Get me out of here alive. I'll give you everything. Get down! Okay. Well, here we go. One more little defend the area kind of thing. 
and I like that the game I like that the game does try to justify a couple things that usually games don't try to justify. One of those is where the bad guy gets all of his high-tech stuff. Okay, let's get rid of these things here. Uh, so, for example, this game points out that Menendez has 3D printing technology that he's using to make his armor, all that other stuff, which is pretty cool. Uh, Menendez does not have planes, trains, uh, all that other stuff that you kind of expect out of a James Bond-style villain. So he has to make do with a lot of foot soldiers and drones, which is... Uh, I don't know, I really appreciate the, the fact that the game does not try to just uh, say, yeah, you know what, 3D technology, you know, it doesn't try to just hand wave away why he has all this stuff. It points out that he has a lot of followers, it points out that he has this 3D fabrication stuff, and uh, it, makes, it makes a little bit of a difference when you're trying to believe in this story, even though it's completely unbelievable at times. Now where's the solarium? This way. The locking mechanism requires two operators. Yep. Yeah, I'm not dumb enough not to do that. All right, let's go see MacGuffin. Follow me. The Skrillex machine. Quantum entanglement. This single device has more processing power than your entire military infrastructure. Rumors around the lab were that Menendez plans to use it as a basis for a massive cyber attack. I, I heard talk of something called Karma. It may be the, the name for the cyber weapon. If Menendez uses a solarium worm, to initiate an attack, there will be nothing anyone can do to stop it. I couldn't stop it. <laughs> yeah, this game has a real penchant for killing scientists, doesn't it? Uh, or I should say the series does. Uh, if you remember in the previous Black Ops, there was a scientist that was killed with a shot in the head after giving you important information as well. Uh, who tried to defect from his boss. <laughs> I don't know, maybe it's a trope that Treyarch's trying to, to uh, kind of put out there. Alright. No response. Mm. We'll fight a way out. With or without support. Alright. This ain't over yet. So a little buff fight and never hurt no one, right? This is actually pretty inoffensive. This oops, a little high on that. Oh, where'd you think you were going? Hello. Now with the combat axe in hand, I actually have a pretty good chance of uh, hitting a few people extra here. So let's do that. I'm sure someone's going to be upset with me for doing this. <laughs> Railing kill. <laughs> okay. Oh, fuck. Just making use of everything I got on me here. That's what you get. So uh, pretty much we're done with this mission. There's just a little bit of a firefight left to go. And we're pretty much uh, set. Your team can stand out. All right, thanks it's for watching, everyone. Stand we will out. see you next time. It's the extraction team. Boy, are you a sight for sore eyes? I guess we can call this mission accomplished. Admiral Briggs, good to see you. You too, Sachin. Whatever Menendez is planning, Solarium is the key to it. Finally got one over on this cocksucker. He's just a man, Admiral. He'd like you to think he's something more. But he ain't nothing but a sad old pitiful excuse of a man. <laughs>